Pam Greer is the undisputed queen of black exploitation cinema, but she's also an icon for women in cinema. She's one of the greatest American actresses we've had, and now in her 70s, she's showing no signs of slowing down. You'll likely know her from films like Coffee, Foxy Brown, Bucktown, and Jackie Brown. But what's the story behind Pam Greer's incredible success? Let's take a look. Pam's Childhood Pamela Suzette Greer was born May 26, 1949 in North Carolina. Her mother, Gwendolyn, was a homemaker and nurse. Her father, Clarence, was a mechanic and technical sergeant in the U.S. Air Force. Pam is thought of as an icon of black exploitation cinema, but she's actually from a mixed background that includes African-American, Hispanic, Chinese, Filipino, and Cheyenne heritage. As her father was involved in the U.S. military, she lived in different places, including spending some time in England and later in Denver. As a high school student, she appeared in stage plays and participated in beauty contests. When she was 18 in 1967, she moved to L.A., where she got a job working the switchboard for American International Pictures. AIP was a wing of MGM and focused at the time on producing low-budget, B-grade movies as well as the new genre of exploitation films. Before we tell you more about Pam Greer's life and career, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First for more. From Jailbird to Foxy Brown Jack Hill made a slew of women in prison films in the 1970s. Pam Greer was part of an ensemble of actresses who attempted to break out of prison and fight against brutal guards. These films included The Big Dollhouse, The Big Birdcage, and Black Mama, White Mama. But Pam's big break came with Coffee. This was an action-packed film where Coffee wanted to take revenge on the drug pushers who got her younger sister addicted to heroin. The film echoed many of the drug issues facing the U.S. at the time, but also managed to mix in action, humor, and style. It had a brilliant original score composed by Roy Ayers, and Pam's sex appeal was now in full force. The film was one of the early examples of the black exploitation genre, which was one of the unique genres that added to the richness of American cinema in the 70s. Coffee was followed up with Foxy Brown. In this film, Pam played the eponymous Foxy Brown, who decides to take revenge on gangsters who murdered her boyfriend. It became one of the most influential in the black exploitation genre, and it solidified Pam as a symbol for both female empowerment and black power. Rapper Foxy Brown got her moniker from this film, and it's one of Quentin Tarantino's favorite movies. Years later, Quentin Tarantino cast Pam Greer in his film Jackie Brown. It was based on Elmore Leonard's novel Rum Punch, and in the novel, the lead character was named Jackie Burke. No doubt Jackie Brown is an homage to Foxy Brown. Jack Hill specifically wrote the character of Foxy Brown for Pam Greer. She was now the undisputed queen of black exploitation cinema. Her other notable roles in the genre included Bucktown, Sheba Baby, Friday Foster, and Scream Blackula Scream. Towards the end of the 70s, she also appeared in an Italian film, La Notte dell'Alta Maria, though the film was made in English. She also played Francie in one episode of Roots, The Next Generations, and Mary in the Wendell Scott biopic, Greased Lightning. In this film, she co-starred with Richard Pryor, whom she later dated. The 80s and 90s the black exploitation genre came to a close at the end of the 70s. There are still many films that are heavily inspired by this genre and Pam's acting, such as Undercover Brother, Austin Powers and Goldmember, where Beyonce's character is named Foxy Cleopatra, and of course, Jackie Brown. However, Pam's career continued well into the 80s. She began appearing in television more prominently, appearing in two episodes of The Love Boat in 1980. She also appeared in the TV movie Badge of the Assassin and in episodes of Night Court and The Cosby Show. She also played Suzanne Terry on Crime Story and Valerie Gordon in three episodes of Miami Vice. Her notable film work in the 80s included roles in Fort Apache, The Bronx, Tough Enough, On the Edge, and Above the Law. Her notable film work in the 90s included her role in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, where she played Miss Connors. In 1993, she played Phoebe in the film Posse, which can easily be seen as a nod to black exploitation films. It was directed by Mario Van Peebles, whose father Melvin directed what is thought of as the first black exploitation film ever made, Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song. Her popularity also led her to cameo appearances in many productions focused on black American characters. She appeared in one sketch in the popular comedy series in Living Color in 1994. She later appeared in an episode of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, an episode of The Wayans Brothers, and she played Foxy Brown in Snoop Dogg's music video Doggy Dog World. In 1996, she played Laurie Thompson in the film Original Gangsters, which brought together many of the legends of black exploitation cinema to introduce them to a new generation. She reunited with Bucktown co-star Fred Williamson. The film also starred Jim Brown, Ron O'Neill, and Richard Roundtree. 
She also had lead roles in Mars Attacks and Strip Search, but her most famous role in the 90s was, of course, Jackie Brown. This was not the first time she wanted to work with Quentin Tarantino. She initially wanted to play the role of Jody in Pulp Fiction, but Tarantino couldn't imagine Pam Greer getting pushed around by a man, as was the case in the film. The Struggles of course, a brief mention must be made about Pam's struggles throughout her life and career. She hasn't married, but she had relationships with many A-list stars that didn't work out. She dated her Grease Lightning co-star Richard Pryor and tried, albeit unsuccessfully, to get him to kick his drug habit. She left Kareem Abdul-Jabbar when he insisted she convert to Islam. She also broke up with Freddie Prince and was one of the last people to speak to him before he committed suicide. Pam's childhood wasn't easy. She was raped twice as a child, and these horrific events haunted her throughout the years. No doubt this partially shaped her tough on-screen persona and helped her play roles in films such as Coffee and Foxy Brown. She was diagnosed with cervical cancer in 1988 and told she'd have less than two years to live. But she took action to live a healthy lifestyle, and thankfully her cancer has been in remission ever since. Pam's Legacy Pam continues to act today. Her latest roles are in the TV show Bless This Mess as Constance Terry. She also appeared in the 2019 TV movie A Christmas Wish and the feature film Palms. She's set to appear in an upcoming project based on Stephen King's novel Pet Cemetery. Her notable work in the 2000s and 2010s include The Adventures of Pluto Nash, Back in the Day, The Man with the Iron Fists, and Bad Grandmas. Her most notable TV role in the 2000s was as Kit Porter in the drama series The L Word. Pam Greer continues to act and prove her versatility with both dramatic and comic roles. But for many fans, she'll always be remembered most as one of the great action stars thanks to Coffee and Foxy Brown. Greer is an icon for female empowerment and black empowerment in American cinema, and she'll always be remembered as such. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite Pam Greer movie or TV appearance? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.